If you've ever found yourself one evening, wandering down the quiet street, looking for somewhere to take shelter, you'll know what a blessed relief it is to find such a place as Rain Day Antiques. It hoves into view between two residential buildings, a beautiful, double-fronted store with a big window on either side of the entrance. The windows are divided up into square panes, and the glass between the metal bars is ever so slightly wavy, giving the place a dreamlike quality. This quaint little establishment stays open 24-7, if you can believe it, catering to international antique connoisseurs who might arrive at any hour, and casual passers-by. Which of these categories you fall into, well, that's up to you. On a night like tonight, when the street lamps are fuzzy halos and the rain starts coming down harder so that your footsteps make little slaps and squelches on the sidewalk, there's nothing more welcome than the misty orange light seeping through the antique store's steamed up windows and its weather-beaten old sign hanging above the doorway now creaking a little in the damp breeze that says, Come on in. We're open. Inside, Rain Day Antiques is as cozy as can be. Push open the door and you'll find yourself enfolded in a heavy set of red velvet drapes. Expert protection against the elements. As you emerge from these into the store, the drapery rings click gently as they glide across the rail. It's quite a place. Above you is a domed skylight that looks up into the night, and the rain patters satisfyingly onto the glass overhead. There's plenty of space to move around, but every surface is piled high with curios, ornaments, and works of art. To the left of the door is a brass umbrella stand, and above it, a set of coat hooks, so feel free to unburden yourself of any damp layers and take this chance to really relax. The owner of this charming emporium is a middle-aged man named Henry. A dapper and astute gentleman who is sitting quietly in the corner of his kingdom reading a newspaper. Henry is the kindest man you could ever hope to meet. He is a true listener and there are very few people you can say that about. If you ever chose to confide in him, you can be sure he'd listen carefully until the end. Then he'd say something very simple, but very wise. Something that would let you know, everything is going to be okay. Now, as you enter, he nods at you graciously, with an unobtrusive hospitality that says you're welcome to browse in peace for as long as you like, but... If you need him, he's right here. Have you ever seen so many wonderful items in one place? Look over there. Sitting on top of an antique sideboard is a leather hippo, about the size of a footstool, but if anyone actually went so far as to rest their feet on this hippo's gently curved back, where a neat seam runs along it, well, that would seem very unkind. More likely you'd want to give this hippo a little pat from time to time. Try it. His mahogany-covered bulk is surprisingly firm, with just a hint of something rumpled underneath. His stuffing. Where he's been sewn together, his stitches are straining somewhat, as if he's had one too many good meals. Well, he's lived a long time. Over the years, he's become rather worn and discolored in places, but that only adds to his character. You'd only be tempted to give him a name. What could it be? George? Aubrey? Or perhaps her name is Victoria? Or Maud? Either way, this is one dignified hippo. 
There's something so comforting about puttering around in here while the rain is rushing down outside. Henry, the proprietor, is playing a little light classical music in the background. It's hard to tell where it's coming from. Perhaps from the gramophone you can see sitting on a cabinet just behind Henry. It's golden horn, wide open in the low light, like a night-blooming flower. But no, the record resting on the turntable is still. So the music must be coming from some hidden source. Beneath the gramophone, a sign states firmly, not for sale. Well, of course, it's hard to imagine how Henry can bring himself to part with any of these things. In any case, the gentle strings are a perfect accompaniment to the rain, which is trickling down the store front windows with a rushing, crackling sound, which reminds you, such is the coziness in here, of the sound a fire makes, burning logs in a hearth. The store smells of old books and radiators, with a slight freshness where the scent of rain is rising from your wet umbrella as it drips into the stand. Every so often, the lights of a car streak through the window, illuminating the darker corners of the store. In that moment, you see a row of leather-bound books and a fine folding room screen. Its silk panels are embroidered with Japanese scenery, houses with curved roofs surrounded by trees, a bridge arching over a river. The sound of the car passing is a loud sigh. The rain seems to briefly up its tempo before resuming its steady rhythm. You could stay here all night, just breathing in and looking at things, thinking about their stories.